All right, welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those that are new, welcome. Today I have an exciting guest for you, and she has a wealth of experience in business, but also in the corporate world. So you're gonna hear so much about her. But before I get started, I just want to say welcome if you're new. If you're not, you know, make sure you're able to share this with someone that you find valuable and then subscribe to my channel. This is Anne Nguyen. I'm a success coach, uh, specializing in leadership and business coaching for women, helping you to thrive authentically and also redefine success on your own terms. So with that, I'm going to introduce Farah Kacha and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi. Hello. Hi, Anne. It's nice to be on here. And um, for your viewers, a little bit about me. Um, I am a, well, today I have worn many hats. Today I'm a small business advisor, a franchise consultant, uh, and an owner of multiple small businesses. I have um, a background in engineering. I've spent over a decade in technology and management consulting. Um, I've started a business from scratch. I have done business through franchise. Um, so I've just done a little bit of everything. I'm also a mom um, of a beautiful two and a half year old. I live in Richmond, Virginia, and and my family. I have family in Texas as well. So, and Far and I knew each other through college. So we've we've gone way back. But you know, it took this long for us to get together and actually be invite her on my podcast. So um, just because I think her journey is so interesting, and I think a lot of you can relate. So with that, we're going to dive into the questions today. So you mentioned a little bit about your journey, very high level. Um, can you kind of deep dive a little bit more? Like, what are some key turning points in your career that led you to where you are today? Yeah. Um, so it really actually started from after I graduated college. I did graduate with an engineering degree, but um, I was offered a job right before, you know, right out to college. But I wanted to go to medical school, so I didn't take the job. And I had sort of the year off to, to do my MCATs, relax a little bit. And it was during this time that... Um, I had a friend approach me and ask me to help her with something that she was doing. And that sort of started my journey towards building my first business. I hadn't intended, you know, to really build a business. I never saw myself as a business builder, but, um, so it just sort of happened to me and it, it um, for the sake of time, I won't talk about, you know, sort of how the business, what it, you know, how it kind of grew, but it essentially ended up being a education a tutoring business, education consulting, uh, college prep, um, career career uh, coaching for for high schoolers as well as adults that were doing changing their careers. So I was kind of the breadth of everything that I was doing in my business. Um, and I and so I dad mentioned I go into you know the medical school component that didn't work out again. That's uh, could be a podcast on its own. Um, and so my business was doing well, and at about two and a half years in. I had to, I was getting to a point where I was, I'd been turning away clients um, and I really needed to get serious and go, okay, do I really, am I serious about this business? If so, I need to start thinking about expansion more seriously. And what does that look like? Um, or if I'm not, then I need to figure something else out. And at that time I was still young. I had a relevant engineering degree. I was still trying to figure out what I wanted to do in life. I, the business thing, I was like, all right, I've done it. I know how I can, I can do this. So let me try something else. Um, and so that led me to go into corporate America and do consulting. Um, so I ended up joining Accenture and it was, uh, so I spent the next decade at Accenture and at Accenture I did in that time, I ended up working for, um, 19 clients in 11 different industries, uh, 25 different teams with teams all across the world, teams in Europe, America, um, Asia, you just, you name it. Right. And I did everything. And by the time I was done with my career there, I had done everything from ideation to strategy, all the way to design, development, implementation, and after. Um, and the latter half of my career, I ended up focusing more on data, data analytics, data science. Um, and I left my, I was, I retired from corporate America when I ended up um, making it to doing um, AI product management and design. Wow. So let me kind of pause there because you went through your, like a decade of your life pretty fast in two minutes. Right. And I think some people are like, so how do you get to that consultant and what does that consultant looks like, especially with background engineer? Like, how do you even get there? Like if for yeah. someone listen to this, or like I want to get into the consultant world, what do I have to do? Um, if you can share some maybe golden nuggets, that would be great. Um, so yeah. there. Yeah. 
Um, I think, you know, one thing is in terms of getting in, again, it depends on which level you're getting in. So it'll be a little bit different if you're getting in when you're a lot younger, maybe out of college versus when you're trying to get in a little bit later in life. But one thing across the board that all consulting companies are looking for is, um, and I guess this becomes a little less when it's later in life because you get more specialized. But when I was interviewing for, for Accenture, um, what I thought was interesting is every question that I asked them, like, okay, so what is the job going to be? They go, it depends. What am I going to do? It depends. So one thing that's very different from consulting than like just regular jobs in corporate America is you're not applying for a job. There's not a job description and that's like, okay, I'm applying to be, you know, this particular job. They hire you just because of certain things that you have. And what they're looking for is they're looking for someone that is obviously smart, right? So they want you to be, you have high, whatever, IQ, aptitude, whatever it is. Someone that can learn and pick up very quickly. Um, someone that's not afraid to try new things and that not, so not afraid for, of change because you will never be doing the same thing. Consulting is about as dynamic as you can get in corporate America, you know? And so, um, so that's really all, the, and, and that's all they're hiring for smart people that they know can pick up things fast because that's what it, that's what it means to be successful in consulting. Mm. What were some of the obstacle or challenges as you, because I think you were fairly new uh, into the consulting, like fresh, yeah. almost so, like fresh grad. I know it's not fresh grab, but um, yeah. you have some experience through internship, but fairly new into and step into that world. So what were some of cha your biggest challenges as you get navigating the consultant role, being so new and you look so young and yeah, you know, those um, are some of the potentially some unconscious bias that working against you. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, they, they, I got, I sort of, because I had the engineering degree, which is what I used to kind of interview for that job, they sort of brought me in into technology consulting um, arena. Mm -hmm. And that, and, and I actually started in the oil and gas industry. So I was very many, you know, most times I was the only female, the only one under 40, and the all not, only non Caucasian in the room many, many, many times. Now, that has its pros and cons. The pros was from a very young in my career, I was sitting with the managing directors and seeing exactly how things are getting done, exactly how the higher ups are working, and really learning and soaking that up. Um, the disadvantage of it was actually because I came from a world where I had my own business, um, to then now go into an environment where there wasn't much expected of me. Um, so I was actually, you know, I was able to do a lot more than what, you know, being the only female, they just assumed, okay, she knows, you know, here's some work, go make a PowerPoint look pretty. Actually, to this day, I cannot make a PowerPoint look pretty. If that's how you're evaluating me, then I am a failure. But from a very young age in my career, I was very much capable in realizing why it was that that managing director was not getting through to the client. But because I was so young, and I, I was thinking, oh, I'm inexperienced. These guys are really high up. They know. I, I didn't say a lot, right? I wasn't expected to say a lot. I didn't say a lot. And I was being evaluated in something that wasn't my strength. My strength is I'm really good with strategy. I'm really good at understanding people and really good at figuring out how, how, what, what their problem is and solving that. But that's what managing directors are supposed to do, not the analyst in the room, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm being evaluated on how capable I am because I can you know, I'm not very good at making slides. That was really my biggest struggle for a long time. And I told myself, you know, I kept telling myself, I go, you know, that's fine, Farah. All you got to do is just, just you got to do your time, get through this. Eventually, you're going to get up and then you're going to be the person that can actually really make a difference in that room because I could see things. And, and looking back in hindsight today, I can see, I realized that I could see things that nobody else in the room was seeing. But at that time, I did not have the confidence to realize that. And I just thought, oh, maybe it's just me. I'm, you know, what do I know? Mm -hmm. Right. And so that was the biggest thing that I kind of, my, my issues there. So you brought up a really good point. I want to take a moment to kind of deep dive up. So how, at what point or what trigger point for them, for you going from in a way, like, I don't know enough, right. Kind of like that. I don't know enough. I'm too young to shoot, I know enough. And I actually know more than some of these people all and I can be a contributor to the conversations. So what was that trigger point from point A to B? Because I think most women and even men included, especially step into a new role, tend to have that um, feeling, right? Like that sentiment that I'm not enough, I need to learn, I'm a newbie, I, I don't think I should speak up when in the other way, you, you may have 
more experience or the knowledge than others. So what triggers and how do you get from point A to point B? Unfortunately for me, it was a hard and long process. Mm. So it wasn't one trigger. It was over and over and over again experiencing this. And as I continued to grow in my career, because I was actually from, from the outside, I was very successful. I was moving up the career. Everyone was like, everyone was so envious about, oh my God, you're in this, you know, you're consulting or you're doing really well, right? But mm -hmm. I wasn't, I, it was very different when you're in it, right? Um, and so, but I think it's, I remember every project that I started, I would, I never knew, I was like, always afraid, like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. And then just knocking it out of the park. But over and over and over again, I still continue to feel that way. Every, after every success, I still continued to feel inadequate and I still kept moving up and up. And as I started to keep moving up and up, I realized that, um, you know, naturally, as you take on more responsibilities, um, when I was the few times that I did have the courage to say things mm -hmm. and I was able to make a difference, it was like the game changer for the whole. I mean, it, it took it took levels of success that were like. I was the only one out of the entire, like all the teams in the in the project to, to be able to accomplish this, for me to really get it in my head mm. that I am capable. I, it's one of my biggest regrets is, is that this imposter syndrome that I still deal with every day. But I mean, I, yes, I, I wish I learned this faster and mm. sooner. Um, but it had to get knocked into me over and over and over and over again um, for me to really go, okay, you know what? Yeah, it's it's me. And every time I was doing things, how in, seeing the impact that it was having um, and realizing, yeah, it really is me. I am different and it's actually really good. And then I will say, one, you know, again, across, I've had many bosses in my in my time working at consulting. Um, and very few of them have been amazing. And one or two of them sort of recognizing that and giving me the platform to be able to to really lean in and do and implement my ideas mm -hmm. was how I was able to kind of understand, oh, yeah, this, you know, I'm really am mm -hmm. great. Actually, you know, let me not lie. I still don't believe I'm great. I'm always surprised <laughs> what I can accomplish. So I haven't really I haven't really accomplished. I mean, I haven't I haven't overcome this yet today. Yeah. Wow. And coming from someone who is so successful to where you are, and then we'll talk a little bit about your entrepreneur journey. But, you know, I think imposter syndrome is, I, I call it really a fad because a part of it is we're not an imposter. We think we are an imposter, but it's not just luck that you get yours, your hard work, your capability, but being able to shed these barriers, right? Like the seldom and beliefs. And of course, it won't go away. But if there's a strategy for you to like minimize or talk to like, I see you, I hear you, but I am not you. That conversation. And honestly, I still have those conversation up to today um, in my journey. So I think every single woman, and I would say, I wouldn't say men also encounter something like this. But I think in our head, women have different conversation than men when it comes, when that voice comes up. Um, so what are, like, how did you, so in a way you overcame it by basically being hit with it with so many times you'll realize, okay, it's the same. Even through all the accomplishments you've done, you still hear that voice saying, man, it was luck or, you know, how did I do that? Like amazing, yeah. like amazement, right? Yeah. Um, so looking back, if, you know, if your younger self knew, what would you do differently? Mm -hmm. I think that I would have, Mm -hmm. um, placed more, um, importance on what, like what I think, like the way I think or my ideas or that I can do something that I, if I, if I could go back to my younger self, I would tell her, listen to it, believe in yourself, mm -hmm. believe that's it. I would just say, believe in yourself because it is true. You know, what is happening is really, it's true, you know? Wow, that is so powerful. And then sometimes we have to pause. Like there are things we say to ourselves that would never ever echo that word to anyone else outside of, you know, outside of anyone. But but we say things to ourselves sometimes I'm like shocked to hear it when I confine with other women and they're like, why do you say that to yourself? Um, so what do you think are most important qualities of a female leader? And then 
how can we cultivate those qualities? Yeah, you mentioned a few of those, but yeah. Now, now let me let me just preface my、um, response with you know my background, my experiences. I've been predominantly both in my history as well as even today in a world that's been male dominated. So that's so that's you know that's where my perspective comes from.、Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's any different if it's a different an environment where it's predominantly women, right? So,、um, but for a female leader in a male dominated world, because that's the perspective I have, I think that one is、um, being being comfortable. In your abilities, right?、Mm-hmm. So it's very important for a female leader to be comfortable in your abilities, and therefore also comfortable in what you're not good at. Because I think that you know, especially female leaders in in the world that I've come from, it takes a lot to get there. It takes a lot, and and they've built so much armor on the way up, and that they just can't, you know, they have they feel like they now have to keep portraying this success image. Right,、mm-hmm. um, and, and and you can't you do and not having that kind of like like yes I can't do this and that's okay、It、doesn't mean I'm not a successful leader right so being able to have that perspective and really being undoing all of that that、uh, taking off all that armor that you've built along the way up because that is what it took to get up there、mm-hmm. um, and then second just being now this is more of a the reality is within the man's world. Um, a lot of qualities that that women have and that make them successful are seen as weaknesses in the man's world. Such as we may think before we talk, we may take time to analyze something, we may be unsure about something, so we want to talk, think about it a little bit more. Those are seen as weaknesses in the from from the male perspective, and I know that from experience.、Um, mm-hmm. But but for a female leader, when they are coaching somebody that an up and coming leader, be honest about the struggle. That you have to go through every day. Don't make it seem like you overcame it, because the reality is you haven't. But、mm. if you don't tell them that you're still there and still struggling, then they're going to think that the only way for them to be successful is for them to overcome that struggle.、Mm. Wow! Can you say that one more time, please? Because I think <laughs> yes, 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 and yes.、Um, yes. I think it comes down. To, we'll have a question about mentorships, but yeah, I think. I think it comes back to being vulnerable, right? Like being, yeah, that's the word. I, I, I、yeah. need to throw this word out, like being authentic, because I know that sometimes that word can get overused and o- abused. But really, show up as who you are and sharing with people, like kind of those take off the sharp armor, take off the shields, and really show your heart and like what you have done to get to where you are and some of the sacrifices. It's not like just all. It's not all rainbow and unicorns. There are some sacrifices that you have to make, and I know you had a personal story that can definitely share. But yeah, it it takes it takes courage to admit that you're still struggling, or you're is you are still a work in progress product and not perfections. And I don't believe in perfections, but I think sometimes we, especially Type A,、uh, highly driven women, tend to put on that. I got it. I got it all. It's all. It's like you make it look so perfect that it seems scary for others. Like I don't know how she can do it all, but maybe. And then she- you make it unachievable, you know, for the normal person, and we and that's not good either. Right. right. So absolutely. Wow.、Oh, yeah. So good. So good. Eighteen minute mark. We're already like gotten some really good nuggets here. <laughs> So,、um, so going back to cultivating these qualities. So、um, I know you mentioned two really important. One. What other Ways to help other women, to, you know, younger generation to to cultivate as they move up, or even those who are at their executive level, to cultivate these、uh, qualities, and then really, what other tribe or community they can do to not because you don't have to do it yourself, right? So share a little bit.、Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, one of the things I maybe what I'll do is I'll tell them what I did that helped me. Yeah. Um, I, you know, when I started my career, um, in corporate America. First thing I did is I looked up because I knew that's where I'm going, right? So I wanted to I wanted to know what that looked like,、um, and I, you know, I used whenever I got opportunities, whether it was in a networking event or it was a formal mentoring session, right?、Um, to to talk to women that were ahead of me、mm-hmm. um, and really ask them right questions so that I knew what to expect. 
because for me, it's about I want to know what to expect so I can prepare for it ahead of time. And also for me, what I end up doing is also making me realize if it even was for me or not. Mm. Right. Um, and so, you know, I and 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 one of the things um, that I, you know, speaking of sacrifices, you know, I really liked and not everybody told me this, not every you know person I talked to, but the few that were very honest with me about what it takes. And that's why my advice earlier was tell people about the struggle. Right. Um, they talked about their sacrifices and I'm really glad they did because it made me realize that that's not where I want to go. Mm. Right. Um, and so if I am an ambitious person, then what is ambition? Where do I, if that's not the destination I want? So what's the you know, what what is my alternative? And then yeah. kind of learning that from a very young, young age so that you can kind of adjust and work towards where you want to take yourself. I think there's power in, in sharing what that sacrifice, because if I have to get up there, I have to do 90 hours a week, nonstop, on call, travel. Yeah. yeah. And let's say you prioritize family, like, you're right, then it's not going to happen. Yeah. Like, are you ready to make that commitment to your career at the sacrifice of your family life? In everything that comes, I don't believe in this word balance, right? We'll talk about it later, but like it's really being able to integrate your life because your life is like a, a circle. Like I kind of think of like the will of life, right? You just certain times of days, you just come and that will be your priority. And then the other things would be more priority. So it's priority management, not time management. Um, no, absolutely. Um, in your journey in the corporate world, before we we set wig to your entrepreneurial, your own business, what was the, um, how has mentorship really shaped your career? And why do you think it's important for women to support other women? Specifically? Yeah. And I know you mentioned a little bit, so I want to capture that before we move to the next. Mentorship was pivotal for me. Now, I will say I had a lot more men mentors, though, than women. Mm. Part of that is also, again, the nature. I was in a male dominated world, right? And the statistics, you know, it's fewer, fewer, like few women here to start with. So they get even less and less as they go up. So very few that made it up there. And sometimes the ones that made it up there, it just had too much armor on them. And so I just couldn't connect with them, right? Um, but so I've had most of my most pivotal mentors have all been men. So I'm sorry, ladies. <laughs> I'll be honest about this, but they have helped me through career transitions. They have been, um, you know, everywhere from saying, you know, hey, if you do this for me, I will connect you to the right person that's going to get you to where you want to go to, um, you know, telling me, um, giving me opportunities to do something that I had never done done before, but I wanted to do. Right. So it's so the one thing I got really lucky in my life is many a times I was able to make my career transitions and I've transitioned five times in my life, right? And career wise, I was able to make that transition into doing something absolutely brand new where somebody gave me that opportunity to do it, even though I didn't have any experience, but they knew me and they knew other things about me. So really, you know, giving me an opportunity to do something absolutely brand new because they know other aspects about me. Um, so all of that, you know, meant, and then really from the women perspective, it's the mentors that were very honest to me about what it took to be successful in in um, in, in their role. Mm. So, wow, yeah, and I think there's power in getting mentors in general, regardless of gender, right? Because I think it's not the gender; it's the persons that really invest in you. Finding that mentor who wants you to to see you succeed, who wants you to be successful. It'd be nice to have another woman so can see some of the sacrifices can relate on some certain things that you cannot relate to men. But I think there's power in just mentorship in general and an empower woman to empower women as well. Right. But I think mentors, regardless of who they are, as long as they're willing to help you get to your end goal and do it in with a will and heart, I take it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think for me, a lot of times it was opportunities that they gave me. Absolutely. And there are things that they see in you that you don't see and vice versa like the so I think that's really important. So I want to kind of ask. So in terms of your mentorship, we talked about but like, have you ever made a significant career change or pivot? And then what motivate for you to do this 
to make those decisions. Yeah. So I think the most active and significant that I made was recently from, from quitting and retiring from actually retiring because I'm not going to go back. It doesn't matter even if I fail, I'm never going back. <laughs> so I have retired from corporate America. Um, I retired at the height of my career. I was in AI, which is the hottest field. I had a very um, good projected career. I was, I had, I was not only in the hottest field, but I was in the best position in the hottest field to really go up. Mm. But I decided to retire, leave all that and start my own business. <laughs> Until you go into the why, because I think that's really important. Yeah, yeah. So Great. one is, it, it wasn't something that happened overnight. You know, as I said, um, wh when I was learning uh, through my career, as I kind of like when I started to look up and find out, you know, what is the, where I want to go look like. Yeah. Um, when I realized one thing that, that people that I learned is that in corporate America, the higher up that you go the la in the ladder, the less control you have control over your life control over your time control over your decisions control over freedom you just it's a lot less um and however when it comes to business and i know this because again i come from a background of people in business right so so really the corporate america that that was i have i had the other point of view already too right so in business it's the other way where it the more successful you get, so the more time you spend, the more successful you get, the less the less you actually need to work in the business, the less of your time it takes, right? So, so it's the exact opposite paradigm between success in, in corporate America from a time perspective and an effort and a money perspective and in the business. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I knew that I was, I was no intention then. I had already decided quite a while back that you know, I wasn't really interested in moving up the career ladder. Um, however, I ended up really still taking way too long to leave because when I was having fun, I was learning things. I was still trying to figure out what I wanted to do when I leave. Right. Um, but then it got to a point. The other thing I also learned through my experiences is that um, when I I am somebody that likes to to own and build things mm -hmm. that I was given all the opportunities to do that all the time all, they people saw it in me and they gave me that chance because they knew you give it to farah she will get it done in fact that was the the reputation i had so i took a lot of pride in what i did right mm. but then i i learned over time that that all my efforts weren't necessarily like they don't come back in, as a reward mm. um definitely if you're salaried you, i mean even if like you can work really hard or you can work kind of hard and you'll still get paid the same amount right um, or you can, you know, when I did do things that were extremely successful, the um, returns, both from a recognition as well as a monetary perspective, got amplified for my levels up and not necessarily for me. And when I had a very good boss, the few times I had a very good boss, I didn't mind that. But for many times, it was with, or in a few times I had extremely bad bosses, but I still gave my best, not for them, but for the clients I was helping. And so even when I was successful, it left a really bad feeling in my heart because I was giving success to somebody that was really bad and toxic, but I did it not for them. I did it for my clients, but they got all the reward and benefits for it. So, so recognizing that that was the setup, right. And that as I kept going up and up, it wasn't necessarily changing. I thought, you know, let me stick my time as I go up, things are going to get better. It doesn't, it doesn't get better. Right. So there was that aspect um, and I think it got to a point for me. Um, and then I sort of discovered what I like to do. So in, in my corporate world, I got to a point where I was deciding whether to build or buy. I was helping make those decisions for the products, you know, with companies, whether it's acquisitions, whether it's a technology product, right? So I used the same. And the other thing, oh, the other thing I also learned working in, in the consulting world is the value of focusing on high or the importance of focusing on high value tasks, right? And not reinventing the wheel. And so if someone's done something and it's working, unless you're doing something extremely unique, don't waste your time trying to rebuild the same thing. You can be a lot more successful taking it, you know, re-leveraging re it. And so I used all of that same knowledge that I was using in my day to day to help companies be successful and applied it to my own world. And that's how I discovered the franchise industry. So I had all these pain points. I knew that the corporate America was not my end goal anyway. I, I, I knew I was leaving anyway. Um, it just didn't just it was a when thing for me. 
Um, and then I found what I liked, right? Um, and and so then it got to a point where the cost of any risks associated with you know entrepreneurship were so much lower than the cost of staying where I was at. Wow. So and I mean, then, yeah, and I think that's really powerful in terms of how you share your story. And then there's also a personal, you know, attachment to it too, right? Like your 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 the freedom that you're looking at, your angle, right? Being able to build your business and then being able to create the freedom that you need to take care of what you need to take care of your family because you're realizing um, your corporate world, you weren't able to, you were, I mean, you she was a workaholic, guys. Like <laughs> every time I talk to her, I know she's she's workaholic. She's, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I was like, and, and that's how she is. Like, you are a type A ambitious driven woman and you're going to put your 110%, but then you realize the output it's not necessarily in return and at your own detriment. Yes, exactly. And, you know, all those women that I talked to that were up there, you know what they told me? They told me there is no balance and that the only way they're able to be a mom and the successful career woman is because they have a very good nanny who's raising their kids. And their their biggest advice to me was when you find that nanny, keep her. Mm. I didn't want that for my life. The You know, so, Yeah. So it was both professional, but also like a personal yeah. why. And that's yeah. why you decide to take on this risk because, you know, starting your own business is not easy um, for sure. Yeah. So um, tell the audience a little bit more. How long have you been in your business? And you kind of state reasons why and you picked this niche. But what lessons have you learned along the way thus far? So I essentially left corporate America last summer. And then dive full head on into my business. Um, now, one thing I did do differently this time is I didn't start my business from scratch. Because unlike when I was much younger and a lot more time on my hands, um, I was a lot more smarter now. Um, time was more valuable. And I'd learned how to smart work smart and not work hard. Um, and so I actually decided to start my business in a way where I already had acquired the systems that I needed instead of building them myself, even though I was fully capable of doing that. But it was just not worth my time today to do that. Um, and so uh, so one of the things that I, I, I guess I realized, so it's been less than a year. Um, when I was getting into this business, it's a brokerage business. My husband's got a background in commercial real estate, so he understands brokerage um, very intimately. He told me, he goes, you know, Farah, um, in brokerage, it's a mental game. Um, you can make a lot of money, but the first two years, you won't make anything. But if you can stick it out, then you will be successful. So I already came in expecting, you know, that this is my, if I don't, we, we planned it. I did all my research. I knew exactly. I found the role I liked. I made sure that I was, you know, the skills of somebody who's capable in this role were all ones that I had. I did my research on how to get into this business, right? Um, and I picked the way that matches my goals and my personality. Then mm -hmm. I went ahead and made the decision because at the end of the day, I trusted myself. I trusted. I just thought about it and I go, if everything I've done, literally everything I've done, I've been able to do it. Why? Why? What is the even one example why I wouldn't be successful in this? And I couldn't find one. I honestly, I'm sorry. I know this sounds really, no, <laughs> um, healthy, really but that was for your I went through, through, you know, absolutely. Um, not a that's what, you know, like, like that's, that's the level I want to say of like how much that that's why I know how, how difficult it is to overcome that, that fear of success, because even someone that has never failed is mm -hmm. questioning whether they'll fail, you know? Mm, yep. So, um, so anyway, I made the decision to do it. Um, and one of the things I learned because of the way I decided to start my business is um, I am making money already. Just this week, I sent two invoices out. So one thing I learned, again, I underestimated myself, uh, is that I am actually a lot more capable of being successful a lot faster than I realized. Part mm -hmm. of that is because of the systems that I used to get started. And I had I done it a different way, the, the ramp up would have been longer, um, even though I was OK with that. Um, the other thing I realized is now I'm, you know, is, uh, learning how to, and this is the biggest lesson I will say, um, learning how to drive the car with a steady foot on the gas, because mm. 
because the the, the ambitious person in me <laughs> who is capable of racing but i don't want to do that right the whole point is i want to like my goal was to to do this in a way that i was able to really find balance with what's important and my family is important you know i have a daughter that's got medical needs right so being able to be there for her for those without feeling guilty and feeling like i'm holding myself back and i'm not going to be successful in my career because i can still you know work my business and be there for her because as long as I'm moving forward, I will get to where I need to go. And in the meantime, I'm doing it in a way that I can look out and enjoy the scenery. I love it. And for her, for far to say that, guys, <laughs> I've known her for over a decade. And that's amazing. It's, it's a transformation on its own. And uh, I'm going to insert like a funny story in there. So I went and visit her back last year in September. We were on a hike. And she was like hurting. I'm like, I don't know how to make it, but being far, she was so determined. She got a cane out and she's like, and it was like a short, scenic, not difficult hike. She's like, I don't know how to make it, but she did. And then not only she did that, we got to like the area where they were like rocky. And I was like, you know, far, you don't have to go up. Like, it's fine. You're good. Like we made it this far, like enjoy the view. Cause it's still a beautiful view under like not the peak, right? Like that rocks is pretty rocky. She's like, no, I'm going to make this part. I'm going to keep going. So I see her like climbing up. I'm like, oh my God, my heart, like, please don't fall. Please don't fall. Like, but no, she went up and she went down and she like, we took pictures and celebrate and it was just amazing. So that's the kind of personality that she has and being able to realize that she's like, I, I know there was one statement that you said that really like echo with me. She's like, I just realized how much I neglect myself through all these years in the corporate world. And that hits me. That hits me really hard. That's why I want you to bring this out. Okay. I, I feel like I want others to hear it too. Like corporate or all your own business, regardless, right? Because you can overwork yourself in your own business too. But like realize that you shouldn't lose yourself in the process. And yeah. uh, that story just really echo with me, um, especially seeing you like with her K on one arm. And the arm, the arm is like trying to climb up the, the rock. I was gonna say, yeah. We, what, what we haven't told the audience is that I hiked with a cane. <laughs> that really freaked out people that came across us. They're like, "What is going on?" Yeah, but she did it, and she's like, "I'm gonna." And you, you made a vow, and I don't remember. Do you remember this? But you're like, "This is the year I'm gonna make better. I'm gonna do better. I'm gonna be better." And this is the year. And I was like, "Yes." So I think that hike figuratively kind of give you that oof you know like that motivations but i think it kind of represents this whole journey that you you switch from a really highly successful career in corporate world to what you're doing now and even less than a year you're making money in your own business which is almost not unheard of but it's hard to do but you're, you're doing it so i just really want to say i'm proud of you thank you and i just want to let tell people um because again wanting to make this real like hearing you say this i'm like yeah i don't i don't I don't see myself as that person, right? I am someone that was like, I don't even know if I'm going to make it this hill. I'm just like, in my mind, what was, I wasn't trying to make the hike. I was just trying to make the next few like steps at a time, um, you know, and I didn't even know if I could make it, right? So never in my mind was I really going like, oh, I'm going to do this. It was just me going, I'm just going to keep trying until I can't because I don't actually know what I'm capable of. So I'll just keep trying. That is my mindset. So it's really weird to hear like, oh, you know, she's ambitious. She's like, I'm going to get up there. And I was like, no, I never thought about it that way. I was just thinking, I wonder if I can get up there, you know? <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, actually you did mention like, I'm going to keep going. You know, I'm tired. I'll stop. And then yeah. we, we, we walk in a good pace and we slow down. We're like, you're good. You're like, we're good. Like, let's come on. And I think it comes, and there were three of us at that hike. And I think it's just, there's a power in the group. And then just seeing that, hey, yeah, let's let's come right along. Um, but I, I don't know, that hike just really resonate with what, what everything that you've just mentioned is that, you know, your step fast movement, like one step at a time and just keep yeah, going. One step at a time. I mean, the only way you'll lose is if you stop. It doesn't matter how fast or slow you, you're going the race, just keep going. Yeah, I think that, and, you and know, that's what I learned too in the business, you know, is you don't have to be moving really fast. You just have to be, you just have to keep moving. Yeah. And I think that's the same way, like keep moving. If you don't see the dollar, your bank account with like $0 or very minimal as you expected, or 
you know, in this case, like for me on, on podcasts, like I see one view or two views. Um, I got this, um, I was listening to another podcast and uh, this individual actually said this and that really put my perspective in a different way. You know, we're like, oh, we want a millions of views and all this, which like, imagine an arena, it can hold only like two or 3000 people or 20,000 or in a small conference room is a couple hundred. So if you have a couple hundreds to 20 views to one view, that's being you reach out to one person. So that really um, impacted me because I have my YouTube channel since 2018 and then I paused and then life happens and I literally took a break from it totally. So now I'm coming back again and just seeing like, oh, a view here, view there, like a couple hundred views is like, oh man. But now after listening to that and just hearing our conversation, it's really, it's like one step at a time. Like I'm gonna keep publishing. I will keep sharing stories like this. And one person hears it, it changed their life. I consider like my, my impact, like I'm good. I, I did what I set out to do. Yeah. I mean, I talk to business people every single day. I mean, it's my job or people that are wanting to get into business or people that have businesses that are looking to expand. I will tell you the secret to success is the person that has perseverance period. The one who wins is the one that just keeps going. It's not how fast they go. Yeah. Cause sometimes we would go fast and that, you know, you and, and I they exhaust, yeah. and they exhaust themselves and they're like, and then they tap out of the race and they've lost. Exactly. So just steady. Just like we said, that's a theme, right? Like the turtle keep. One step yeah. Away. Yeah. That's right. Tell, I'm a turtle. <laughs> but I'm, I'm a turtle I'm still, on a you know? pad. <laughs> Um, and I think we kind of mentioned some of this, but like, so what are some strategies that you use to stay empowered and motivated, especially when times gets hard, when you hit a wall, yeah. when you, you know, whatever that challenge is for you? Yeah. Um, this is something that I use every day in my business. And this is something that I used to use when I was running large teams and multi-million dollar projects across the world when I was in consulting. One thing I have learned about the human I guess, character or something like that is we need gratification. Um, mm -hmm. And so when you create goals, it is important. Yes, create a goal, but always, and especially if that goal is a lofty goal or a goal that'll take a long time. So that's why I said the larger multi-million dollar projects, those are not short six week projects, right? Those couldn't span two, three years is it's important to have that goal. But on a day-to-day -day basis, the what motivated my teams and what motivates me is not that goal. It's the little, and so you want to make sure you create just the little steps. Work every day towards the small step. Ever so often, step yeah. back and make sure you're working towards a big goal. But if you are thinking about the big goal every day you're working, you will get exhausted. If we were thinking every day about what we wanted to get two years later, what product we want to get two years, we would be exhausted. Today mm. and this week is only about doing what we need to get done by Friday. But that so so that is what for me is that whole thinking about that big goal. That goal is there and it's written down and I will look at it. But that mm. is not what I look at every day because that would be exhausting because you're ne that goal will take a while to reach. And you're not getting that that satisfaction you need to give you that boost of energy to take the next step. I love it. Yeah, I, I think I definitely resonate with that. And I think it's kind of good, the Eisenhower matrix, right? Like, what can you do now today? What can you do later? What can you delegate? Or what do you don't do? But then also keep kind of going to the summit. And I'm going to use hiking because I'm a hiker. Uh, analogies, like one step at a time, like, the summit looks really far. If you keep looking, I'm like, I'm not gonna make it. I'm gonna stop here. But you say, I'm gonna make it to the next milestone. I'm yes. going to make it to the next, just like, you know, on our hike, we're going to make it to mile one. Oh, we're here. Okay. I want to sit and take a break, breathe mm -hmm. and look at the scenery. Okay. That's really pretty. Okay. We're going to go to the next mile. So I, I feel like in life, just similar, uh, what you mentioned, I agree. Now I will say that sometimes people mis misjudge that as you not being ambitious. There are many times, a lot of people have misjudged the fact that they're thinking I'm not ambitious because I'm not like looking at the big goal, I'm not working towards a big goal, but that's not true, right? Mm. Because if you're, if, if my goal is, my goal is just to do five steps. That's what I work on. It's always five steps. But if you talk to someone and, and I tell them my goal is five steps and someone's like, oh, my goal is three miles. Obviously I'm going to look like I'm the less ambitious one, mm -hmm. but 
I actually know for a fact that that is a more successful way of doing things yes. than the other way. Agree. It's what I call the minimum viable actions. Yeah. So when people say, I want to work out and they're like, I'm going to go to the gym every day. I was like, how about we start with one minute push up, one minute yeah. Yeah. jumping jack, like make it so small that it's like early, almost impossible for you not able to do it. So yeah. minimum and when you accomplish it, you get that hit, hit. that makes you want to do more. Right. So. Right. And you're never going to do one minute, like one push up. Right. Or no. One. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's like that momentum is, is up here. It's all a mind game. Like once you get through that first hump, you're like, oh, I can do two more. And then next yeah. thing you know, you're probably already doing 10 minutes of jumping jacks, something to that extent. Yeah. And you'll have done the three mile without thinking about it. <laughs> exactly. So I think it's reverse engineering our goals and like strategy and then kind of it's up here. It's all up here, right? Because if people are like, oh, I have to go work out, I have to go get dressed. I got to change. I got to get my protein shake. I got to get out of the house and drive. Because they think about all that, they're like, man, it's too much work. I'm just going to stay asleep, thinking, right? It, thinking is a lot of work. It's, yeah, mental yeah. drain. <laughs> the mental drain. Like, they already kind of start, set, set themselves not to succeed when they're putting so much stuff in between. Like, if I get A to B, a straight line versus I get A to B and I got to do all this stuff. I mean, human nature, we're, we're, we're lazy human beings. It's, yeah. It, we're we're going to choose the less... Uh, the more convenient, less task, less work, less energy. And that's how we survived back in the day, right? Like, because we don't have a lot of food, so we want to preserve our energy. So anything that's easy, like yeah. it's easy to eat, crunchy, yummy, a lot of sugar, because it gives us a lot of energy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. We're like eating healthier, have to set up some other stuff. So I know you mentioned a little bit before about managing work-life uh, harmony, right? Like professional and personal life. So what advice would you give to other women who are wanting to work on this work-life harmony? I think all women work on, men and women included, uh, work on work-life harmony. But what are some things that work for you in the past or currently that you feel that you want to share with the audience? Yeah, I think it's, um, it's making sure that you, first, I think that there has to be a self- assessment and the self-realization component. I think that you need to really understand what it is that you can do and are good at doing. Um, and also what can you realistically do, right? Um, and then be okay with that. Because like I said, it's not about the, the destination. It's the work-life balance, your destination, it can still be there. But getting to that destination, you you have to be you have to be honest and okay with what your pace is and how you can do this, right? Some mm -hmm. people might, you know, some people can afford a plane, and so they can get to the destination with a plane. Maybe you can't afford a plane, but you can still get to the destination by car, right? Um, some people maybe they don't want to drive as fast; they want to drive slower. Okay, maybe that's what you prefer. So what there's not you know i think we spend a lot of time looking at what others are doing and i mm -hmm. think that this one issue we have today is it's very dangerous these influencers are very very dangerous right because they are selling this success idea overnight success idea that is causing and in any any world any whether it's mm -hmm. business whether it's career it doesn't matter where it is and what that's doing is it's forcing people to think that that's the only way they can get to wherever they want to go and when they didn't, when they try to do it in a way that doesn't align with what they're able to do, what they're capable of doing, and what they want to do, they will fail. They mm. will tap out. Mm. So, and that's how work-life balance is: is like just be honest about what you can accomplish with what you have, right? And then be okay with it. Yeah, it's also being able to know what your priorities are, right? Like, and. You can have, I think my my theme is you can have it all, but you don't have to do it all. And mm -hmm. being able to delegate, to ask for help, to do this. And and you don't have to do it all at once as yeah. well. Yeah. So I think that's, there's some well, You don't have to do it. I mean, oh, why yeah. do you have to do it? Maybe maybe you don't, maybe that's not for you. Right, exactly. You know, not every woman needs to be aspiring to be, you know, like uh, to be ambitious. Not every man needs to, not every person needs to aspire to be rich. Not every person, you know, like, or you don't, that's, that's what I mean is really figure out what makes you happy and work towards that, you mm -hmm. know?
what brings you joy and what what like honestly I'm, I'm not a great cook when I personally I'm not a great cook if I can so I've been asking my sister to cook for me for favorite like Vietnamese food in return I do other things for her like I'm very good with administrative stuff so I end up doing all that stuff so you build a community see what works for you leverage your strengths kind of similar to what you know Farah was saying like she leveraged her to build her business use the same principles in your personal life yeah yeah um all right so i think we talked a little bit about this but in what ways did you break your barriers or challenge the norms and how is this impacting your business now i think that um uh one of the things i absolutely love about and one of the one, one of my many whys to why i wanted to do my business the way i chose to do it is because many many years i've had ideas I've wanted to try something that was different from what was maybe a prescribed best practice in the space. Mm -hmm. But I was limited on being able to implement those when I was in corporate America. But the way I chose to do my business today, um, I can actually, even though this is, if I hear that something is like, this is the way you need to be successful and this is what, you know, I actually have a different thought about it. Mm -hmm. And I can actually implement it because if I fail, I'm only hurting myself. I'm not answerable to anybody. But that freedom finally to be able to test out my ideas mm -hmm. um, and see how they're going to work out. I think for me, um, I know it's not a specific example, but that again, I you know, there's a lot of different ways. But um, I love, love doing that because what I actually and I believe in in my ideas and right now. And they're in the process of being implemented. And I actually think they're going to be quite successful. Mm -hmm. And if they are, then I'm changing certain things about what's the best way to be successful in my industry. You mm -hmm. know, I'm not I'm not there, but I, I actually like think that I may have that potential. So so let's come back and and um, answer this question about how did I challenge the norms and was successful with it? OK, because I'm, well, I'm a short, short uh, podcast interview. Yes. Yeah. Well, one perfect yeah. and then i'm gonna route out the last um questions and then we'll go into rabbit questions later for some fun game. um what advice would you give to other women who are starting out in their careers or their business and for them things to consider maybe tell three things um evaluate your options um they are whether it's a career or a business they could be multiple ways you, you know you could be doing that you could be either getting into it or focusing on different things within it so if it's a business for example the business world there are multiple ways to start a business from scratch through a franchise by buying an existing business through career it could be you know there's it could be that you have a career in a certain industry but there are many ways that they may that you there's so much you don't yet know um, so if, so before you decide that this is how you're going to do it, before you solidify that and then hone down on it and go that path, keep your options open and always be evaluating. Because I'll tell you for me, what I, oh, I ended up doing everything I ended up doing from my major in college all the way to what I'm doing today were things I found out afterwards. I figured out my major in college existed after I'd started college. I figured out, you know, this career that I ended up, you know, sort of building the second half of my consulting career it didn't even exist when I started. It came into being later. So mm -hmm. there are so many options out there that don't don't limit your thought and be open to always exploring. Even if you have a passion for something, you you may not know what else is out there or another way for you to implement your passion. Well said. Well, thank you. I hope whoever listening can hear that. I think it's true until you really like you can read a tons of book and everything until you truly experience it. I think that's what be a game changer. So this is a new thing in our, in my show. Um, and you're the first one to pioneer this. So thank you for entertaining me, but I would call this a one minute, uh, rabbit fire question. So don't think too hard. I'm going to say, you know, one question and just wrap it out. Whatever okay, I have a question. Is, just wrap it out. So I'll be rabbit. One minute for each question or one minute total? Well, see, this is where the analytical one. One minute for each question. Okay, I'll give you a minute to think through. All right, so first thing, tell me one thing you wish your boss had told you. 
that things that the way I felt when I was younger in my career, they don't get any better as you grow in your career. You still have the same problems. One thing you wish your mom had told you. How hard it is to raise a baby. <laughs> that young, that, that infant years. Woo. Very hard. <laughs> I think they told us, let's just, we forget. Yeah. Uh, we don't know it. We're like, okay, yeah. I'm like, How could it be? I think they forgot. Yeah, they probably forgot it's how they get to us. Last question. One thing you wish your younger self knew. How kick-ass I am. <laughs> and that it. I was meant to be an entrepreneur. Don't waste your time in corporate America. I wish my younger self knew that. I was meant to be an entrepreneur. But you know, with every journey that you cross, especially in your consultant world, it helps you to be where you are now. So That's true. there's that is nothing, true. Uh, what I call it, there's never a time to be wasted is, uh, is, is how you maximize the experience that you you get and then you encapsulate it, right? So with that, Farah, thank you so much for this super fun interview. I hope you guys out there listening to this connect with Farah if you're interested in franchise or anything else that she is going to give you because um, she is just a delight to have in your life. Uh, my name is Ang Nguyen. I am a success coach. I help empower career-driven women who are ambitious but overwhelmed to really thrive authentically and redefine success in your own terms by prioritizing what matters to you. And I think we talked about that a lot today. So with that, I hope you will subscribe if you have not. Um, that will help support my channel and keep this channel going and also allow me to bring in other amazing guests like Farah. With that, until next time, thank you all.